liver toxicity in general. Now we're going to talk about how the liver is impacted by steroids and other drugs and chemicals because it's very similar. And I can tell from the comments and from other videos, there's a huge misunderstanding in how the liver works and what liver toxicity even means. People say, oh, I won't take this because it's toxic or oral steroids are toxic, you're gonna damage your liver. I'm just gonna give you a little background and then we're gonna get Coach Trevor's expert opinion as a previous uh, emergency tech bodybuilder who's coached many different clients and reviewed many different lab work, blood work, and has an understanding of how the liver works in the body, especially with drugs and steroids. I've taken a lot of oral steroids uh, and subjected myself to all kinds of supplements because a lot of supplements are, are mildly liver toxic as well. And my liver values have always been elevated. Every time I go to the doctor, most doctors will say, oh, it's a problem. Your, your liver enzymes are elevated. Some doctors will say, oh, that's totally natural. Every bodybuilder, whether they're taking oral steroids or not, they're going to have elevated liver enzymes. Mine have always been within, let's call it normal bodybuilding range, but outside of normal human range. So I did have an ultrasound done on my liver, two ultrasounds, and very detailed. Checked out my liver in every possible way and my liver is 100% perfectly fine. How is this possible if I've taken so many liver toxic things over the years? Well, the liver heals itself. And we're gonna hear more from Coach Trevor about uh, how people actually do damage their liver versus whether liver toxicity even really matters and liver toxicity of steroids. The side effects uh, to the liver with oral steroids or the damage that they say they do is a little overrated. The reason why there is so many problems though is because a lot of people are abusing that and not taking care of their health. Um, I mean, you look at Tylenol, you look at any over-the-counter drugs, and look at all the side effects and what they can do to your liver, and look at on the list of liver damage from steroids versus acetaminophen versus alcohol. There's so many things on that list that cause liver failure than before steroids do. And the only reason you see it kind of apparent is because there's a lot of people abusing these drugs and taking orals either without knowledge or going to the doctor and taking care of themselves. And like you said, even caffeine. And caffeine can be extremely toxic, but it's how your body deals with it. What it creates in order to do that is actually a good thing. So when you have a toxic level, your body's doing something about that to get rid of it. And it doesn't mean you always want to stay toxic. That's the problem people have is they're always taking something and it's kind of irreversible. Then you have nothing really to worry about as long as you're taking care of your health and watching these numbers climb and letting them kind of do this, never staying too high for too long. One of the most commonly used solutions to liver toxicity is milk thistle. And if you look up how milk thistle works, all it does is expand the capillary or blood flow in the liver so the liver can help repair itself even faster. It doesn't actually repair the liver, it just gives your body a little boost in its ability to repair the liver itself. Our liver is meant to handle toxicity. I think the word itself, toxic, is something we're all afraid of, but you don't realize that almost everything in our environment is at some level toxic, depending on your definition of toxic, to the body, and our body's able to handle it. It's a matter of not overwhelming the system with too much of a toxin for too long. So that's why steroid cycles that are oral and that are hepatoxic, hepatoxic means liver toxic, are usually limited to four to six weeks because then we give our body a break in order to regenerate the liver, flush out all the toxins. So Coach Trevor, what's worse? To overwhelm the liver in one instance, like to take a whole bunch of oral steroids at once and then give your body a break? I'm talking like take a ton of steroids pre-workout or take a whole bunch of Tylenol at once. Or is it worse to take a small amount over a longer period of time? This question came up a lot. A lot of people want to minimize the toxicity to oral steroids. They wonder if they should spread out the dosages through the day or that they should just take it all at once pre-workout if they're going with a higher dosage. The problem is when you're taking these things, you're probably taking other things that cause liver damage too. Uh, or, I'm sorry, stress the liver out. So the more you start giving it, there is a chance you can take enough of one substance that completely shuts it, almost like a valve, and you put all these things through and that it gets clogged, just like an artery or something, platelets clog it. Same thing can happen if you gave it so much and it basically clogs and just shut down. That's 100% possible where it would happen. It could happen overnight, and that's the problem, not per se the steroid, but maybe other things. Maybe it was already high from previous cycles, and then they do that, and then 
they start taking all this protein, all these other things, and then all of a sudden it all added up, and now they're causing actual damage, unrepairable damage, for even though it was a short period of time, it was so much it couldn't keep up with it. Giving it slow, moderate amounts, um, like on, let's say a steroid cycle, it may, the enzymes are going to start elevating, but that's about it. It's never going to go skyrocket here at one point, and it may take a lot longer just to come back down, but never come back to its baseline. If you're doing it slowly, it might still come up, but it's going to be able to come down because it's still being able to take away pieces and pieces as you go along. How common is liver injury in bodybuilding? Because we know kidney injuries are more common because the kidneys don't repair themselves like the liver does. We know that the heart doesn't repair itself as well as the liver does. How often do we see irreversible liver damage in bodybuilding and sports? In bodybuilding, I think nowadays it's not as common, but at the same time, I think it is becoming more common. So. I think we got to a point where everybody knows it, the, the liver, the side effects that oral steroids cause and certain drugs that we take cause. This generation that's coming up really does not give a shit. And there's certain people taking all kinds of orals. Thank God they're not what they say they're taking or the actual chemical itself because they would have done the same thing. You know, there's, I've done, like as we talked about 100 milligram D-ball cycle, and we were just talking today, if you were doing 100 milligrams of D-ball, within about a week, you're unable to eat. You start eating just like hepatitis, your gut's sticking out here, you're sick to your stomach, you'll throw up when you eat, you eat two bites, you're done. And because that's what starts to happen. We were in the right direction where it wasn't a problem, but with this generation and the things that are going around in America, the drugs, they're not getting what they think they are. So it's not as, as much of a problem, but it will be. Just give again, real quick summary, bullet point fashion of the symptoms that you would experience if your liver has gone toxic. It'll start with your appetite usually. That's one of the first symptoms as appetite goes. Second is not really bloating per se. It's bloating, but more of like that round belly. And what hepatitis does is that water accumulation in the abdomen will start happening. It looks like a pregnant belly, and it has nothing to do with the big guts on stage at all. Um, but you start getting that bloated look and the sickness when you start eating or drinking too much. You go to the gym, take insulin, and now you're trying to get sugar down, but you can't even get sugar down because you're going to vomit. Then what starts coming really extreme is when your eyes start to become yellow and your blood becomes toxic, similar with kidneys, and your skin can actually turn yellow, and they call it jaundice. That's really extreme. If your skin's turning yellow, if that ever happens, you just need to go to the hospital because at that point, you kind of have a 50-50 chance of irreversible damage or getting in quick enough to be able to reverse it after a year or so. The ways to test your liver is go to your doctor or go to a lab and get your liver enzymes tested, AST and ALT. Usually they're part of a metabolic panel, so usually it's really cheap to get those tested. If you want a more thorough test, then you get a liver ultrasound. Initially in the, in the 70s, steroids were totally fine. All the bodybuilders used steroids. There was no fear about them. There was no emotion about them. It's just that most people weren't interested in taking it or didn't know about it. Then we had this huge steroid scare and everybody's paranoid about all the side effects of steroids and the pendulum swung the other way to an extreme where there was so much misinformation making steroids look bad when steroids aren't bad at all. They're just a drug that can be used as a tool that can be extremely beneficial to health if used correctly. Now the pendulum's starting to swing back. We now have an awakening where everybody's realizing, oh, steroids aren't bad. Wow, everybody, in, everybody who does sports at a professional level is getting caught with steroids. If you have friends that are in professional sports, they'll tell you, yeah, I'm on steroids, but I'm drug tested, but I figured out a way around it. I mean, we hear all the time that pretty much everybody is on steroids or some kind of performance enhancing drug. And so now it's becoming so much more accepted, so much more open. And now people are getting a little bit too comfortable because they're hearing their friends taking mega doses of cycles. And then they start taking a mega dose thinking that they're going to be okay. But then some people, a few people have predispositions. And the same thing happens with the liver. Someone could do a very mild oral cycle of steroids and suffer a lot of liver damage. And other people could do mega doses of liver toxic oral steroids for a longer period of time and not suffer as much liver damage because all our body responds differently to these things. And that's the important point. Be swell and swole, my friends of freedom, pioneers of human evolution.